Glory to Jesus Christ, glory forever. Dear parishioners, I'm uh, reaching out to you from our beautiful, but right now empty church. And this has been, as we all are experiencing, a heartbreaking Lent, kind of a Lent from Lent. But I want to remind you that God is with us, that the Virgin Mary is sheltering us, that all the saints are together in their suffering and their sacrifice that they made for, for Christ, joining their sacrifice to his capital S, sacrifice. And we are joining our sacrifice of humility and obedience to that. I wanted to uh, point your attention to something that you've seen the last couple of years, how to have a great and holy week, how to become more like Christ during Holy Week. This was sent to you yesterday, and it's well worth uh, printing it out and studying it, praying through it, discussing it. Some of these things are going to be uh, very different, and I don't know if you noticed, but there's a COVID precautions watermark over this. So obviously, we have to do our best to help flatten the curve, help protect people, follow our consciences, of course. So the services, we are told to invite family and friends to church. You can share a link. You can say, hey, I wanted to invite you to church, but it, we, you know, we're streaming our service like everybody else. And uh, come, you know, come to Lamentations. Come to one of the bridegrooms. You can, you know, we can stream the services actually even after the fact. They're recorded. We're working really hard. Here's, a, here's our microphone. I think we've got all the bugs figured out to make sure that our streaming goes well. So we can still invite family and friends to church. Obviously it's not the same. We all know it's not the same. But at least it's something. Greet all, especially visitors, with warmth and kindness. Same, same thing, you know, reach out to people. I've been asking you guys to do that, and you have been. Reach out to people and say, dear brother, dear friend, dear Sunday school teacher, dear parish council member, dear founder of the church, dear new catechumen, we miss you. We're praying for you. We hope you're well, and do you need anything? Attend as many services as possible and arrive early. I want to uh, underscore for you that when you are watching a service streaming from your phone or your TV or something, don't be spreading uh, earth balance or some sort of fasting butter on your, t on your toast. Try to be there, stand, kneel, sit prayerfully, you know, with a posture of prayer. Try to fast your way into a morning service. Uh, don't just pop it in, say, oh, okay. No, say, no, I'm going to dedicate this time to God as if I was at church. I know I'm not at church, but as if I was at church. So try to get there early. Try to stay the whole time. Try to keep focused. If you have your Holy Week book, open it up and follow along. Study the texts. They're so beautiful. Keep silence after services. This will be one thing that's a little bit easier for us. You know, of course, at the end of the Holy Week services, I always say, let's stay quiet. And then people go out and everybody's so happy to see each other. You know, they talk and talk and talk, which is good. But from our homes, it's easier to just shut off the stream and sit there for five minutes with the Jesus prayer. Sit there and meditate or ponder on, you know, one of the beautiful texts, one of the beautiful ideas, scriptural images, that is offered to us. Take off at least Holy Friday and Bright Monday. Many of us are taking off all of Lent and all of Holy Week kind of against our will. But do your best to say, these are still holy days. I'm going to work hard to make sure that the church is open Holy Week for you to stop by and light a candle, pick up a palm, uh, be anointed with Holy Unction, come and make your confession. And if you 
can arrange it and receive Holy Communion. Just reach out to me, and I need to figure out, I have it in mind, but need to meet out the responsible way to do this for everybody. So prayer, so that was the services. A lot of these things, again, this, this was made for normal times of year, normal times of life, when we don't have the eclipse of sickness over our beautiful Paschal sunrise. Uh, but a lot of these things are just normal part of life. You can do this whether or not there's the COVID shutdown. So prayer, ask God for repentance, prayer, and joy. Holy Week is a holy time, and we can make it holy by praying more, by begging the Lord to give us repentance, by begging the Lord to teach us to pray and to give me heavenly joy rather than earthly happiness, which is so fleeting. If you haven't come to confession yet, hurry. Now, I don't have a blessing, of course, to hear a phone confession and give absolution on the phone, but we do have spiritual direction and we can have an unofficial confession on the phone. So please email me. If you have my number, go ahead and text me. We'll make a time to unburden your souls. And then that will be wrapped into the next time you're able to come for the sacrament of confession. Be ready to resist temptation and flee to God. I talked about how do we deal with thoughts. We recognize them, we repulse them, we pray about them, and then we oppose them by doing the opposite of what the evil thought is saying. So resist temptation and flee to God. The last part of the prayer, part of Holy Week, is beg God for tears to wash away the stains of your soul. And I would say this year especially, beg God for tears to wash away the stains uh, from, our, from our families, our parishes, our church, our states, our country, our world. God is knocking on our hearts, on our hard heads and our hard hearts. He's knocking on them. Say, let me in. Practices, read the scriptures and other spiritual reading. Of course, we're going to have our Holy Week books and we're going to be reading along as best as we can. Say, I'm going to read one of the Gospels. I'm going to read one of the epistles. I'm going to read through the Psalms. And another spiritual reading, something, you know, there's so, so much uplifting information that is for transformation for us. Practice silence. You know, we can be silent in our house. We don't have to be talking all the time. We can go deep into our hearts and tuck our minds focused on God's love and mercy his generosity and providence, tuck them into our hearts and go about our business quietly. Sing and study the texts and hymns of the services. Have your Holy Week books, you know, listen to the recordings that are on the website, listen to the services. You, it's nice with these streaming things, you can stop and play something again. Learn how to sing, sing along. We won't be able to hear you but our hearts will resonate with your melody. And our Lord in heaven, his Virgin Mother, the Holy Apostles, the Prophets, the Guardian Angel that's on your shoulder, the Archangels that are around the throne, they will hear you and they will be singing with you. Give generously. Uh, you know, if you have the means, please continue to support the church. If you have the means, please set aside some money for, for the hungry, for people that are affected. Now, if your employment, if your income is affected, you know, obviously your commitment uh, needs to be altered and you should have no shame, have no guilt for that. Reconcile and live, live peacefully with all. Holy Week is not just holy because we're in church all the time. It's holy because we are drawing near to the Holy One. We are meditating on beautiful things. That beautiful, capital B, capital T, beautiful thing is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who is beautiful. We can help with decorating, cleaning, and cooking. There's not going to be a lot of decorations in the church. It's going to be sad. We'll miss the flowers much less than I'll miss you, of course. But there's decoration for your home. 
Get out your icon of the resurrection. Dust off your icon corner. Get some candles. Beautify your home. Clean your home. Cook beautiful meals. Make sure you sit down together and have a Paschal meal. Make sure you sing Christ is Risen for Pascha. Make sure you sing some of the, the hymns of Holy Week and you sit together with silence, with joy, with solemnity. Make food for people that are hungry. Reach out to each other and say, hey, I have this great Lenten recipe that I love to make for pre-sanctified. I'm going to make some. Can I, bring you a, uh, can I bring you a dish? Support your clergy and choir with prayer and help and kindness. Normally that's, a, that's a, uh, something that we can do. Again, it's a beautiful thing to do. And finally, what do we abstain from? How do we enhance the fast in this time? We turn off the media. We log out of social media. But don't log out of our <laughs> St. Philip's YouTube channel. Turn off your Facebook. Don't spend all your time checking up to see how many deaths are there this, this day. How many much more than last? I'm finding that's happening to myself too. I keep looking, oh, how many, how many, how many? It's going to be bad, brothers and sisters, but it's not going to be as bad as it could be because we're being obedient to the medical community. Postpone decisions and purchases. You know, of course, we're all doing that because of the financial uncertainty, the medical uncertainty, but there's this spiritual obligation, the spiritual overshadowing that we are supposed to put everything on hold so that we can more per perfectly draw ourselves closer and closer to Christ. And so our decisions, our purchases, those are all made not just in light of sickness and financial constraint, but in light of the empty tomb. And finally, don't entertain negative thoughts. Let's drive them out. Let's drive them out. So St. Thomas said a beautiful thing. He said, let us go with him, when they were talking about going to Christ, growing with Christ to Jerusalem. He said, let us go with him that we may die with him. And St. Peter says, or St. Paul, 2 Timothy, St. Paul says, if we have died with him, we shall also live with him. And it's an interesting thing here. You know, we're used to the church being beautiful and bright and packed. And that's right, because the church is a little microcosm, a little taste of heaven. The heavenly liturgy, the divine liturgy is God's liturgy that he entrusts to us. But that the first Pascha, the first Easter, the first notice of the resurrection was quiet. The tomb was dark. There was a flash of light and life. Nobody knew about it. The garden was empty. People only came later and started to figure out what happened. And so we get to experience the cold, dark, scared, sad, disappointed uh, Passover that the apostles, that the myrrh-bearing women, that the Virgin Mary experienced. And may this eclipse for us, for our church, for our country, for our world, as a, as a redawning of God's infinite love, life beyond physical life, true life, May God help us. May God protect us. May God fill us with his faith and hope and love and courage. Amen.